Get homework. All right, maybe we'll look at number seven. Had a slightly lower success. The homework went good, but on number seven has lower success. So let's look at that one. <clears throat> I said number seven, right? Okay, so uh, I can't make it any bigger, so I'll write out what's uh, crucial here. It says, according to one study, the brain weights of men normally distributed with a mean of 1.3 and standard deviation of 0.12. Um, so this is, is this population or sample data? So it says a mean of 1.2, a mean of 1.3, and a standard deviation of 0 0.12. Does that mean or population data? Or uh, pop, uh, population or sample data? She's on its population. Agree with that? Yeah, they, they just say brain weights of men are normally distributed. And they don't say anything about sample size or taking a sample. So this is population data. So this is our mu. And then this is our standard deviation of the population. That's the information they're giving us. Determine the sampling distribution of the sample mean with samples of size 3. So sampling distribution then means <coughs> sample distribution, uh, determine the sampling distribution means that we want to get two things. Two things determine the sampling distribution of sample mean. The first is the the mean of the sampling distribution, which is the mean of means, right? The mean of means. And so basically what they're saying is we're going to take all samples of size 3. What will the mean be? Of all the, the mean of the means of samples of size 3. Easy, right? What, what is it? 1.3, right? And then what's the standard deviation of this distribution of means of size 3? That's what we're saying. 0 0.12, right? Thank you. No? So what is it?
Okay, yeah, so it's the uh, sigma for the population divided by the square root of the sample size. 0 0.069, they want four decimal places. 0 0.0693. Point zero six nine three. Okay, determine the sampling distribution of sample mean of samples of size 12. Okay, again, if you take every sample of size 12 and you look at those means and you take the mean of those means, what are you going to get? 1.3. But now, how will the sample standard the standard deviation of this sampling distribution compare to the one before? Will it be a bigger standard deviation or smaller? Smaller. If you take bigger samples, then your means in bigger samples will be closer to the population means. So it'll be tighter in around that, right? So, and the way we calculate that is 0.12 divided by square root of 12, right? 0 0.0346. Okay. Good. Continue. Okay, so construct a graph of the normal population distribution with the two sampling distributions for brain weights. Choose the correct graph below. Okay, so maybe this were a little... Do you only get one try on this? You only get one try? So yeah, so we really got to think about this. So uh, if we're comparing the, the distribution of samples of size 3 versus samples of size 12, we know that 12 will be... 12 will be longer and wider or skinnier and taller? Skinnier and taller. So we, well, let's just look at that first. So this can't be right, right? Because here it's showing n equals 3 is the tall skinny one and n equals 12 is the shorter one. Okay? This could be right. n equals 3 is uh, more spread out. n equals 12 is more tight to the center. And here it's showing, again, n equals 12 further out. So all we have to do is there's only one choice. Where the higher sample, uh, the higher um, sample size gives us a smaller standard deviation, so we don't have to worry about the population, because these two are showing us that n equals twelve has a larger standard deviation than n equals three. So the only possible possibility is b. <clears throat> Determine the percentage of all samples of three men that have mean brain weights of 0.1, the population uh, mean with a brain weight of 1.3. <clears throat> so now we're back to our samples of size 3. So we had our standard deviation of 1.3. And, or, or sorry, the mean of 1.3, standard deviation of 0.0693. What percent of men have mean brain weights within 0.1 kilograms? So what are we saying? We've got our mean of 1.3, and we want to know what percentage lies between 1.2 and 1.4. These are means now, right? These are, these are means of samples of size 3. <clears throat> and we've got that distribution. So what do we do? We want to know the percentage that lies in this range. I'm going to get Z scores for both of those, right? I'm going to get Z scores and then uh, <coughs> use the chart. Okay, use the chart. So we're going to do um, the Z for the lower limit will be what? Negative 0.1 over. 0 0.0693 and the z for the upper limit will be positive 0.1 over 0 0.0693. Remember that's the, the numerator of this uh, uh, would be 
in this case it would be x bar minus mu of x bar, well that's just the distance away from the mean. And so we, can, we don't have to do that, we don't have to do this 1.2 minus 1.3 like we've done before. We know that we want that to be negative 0.1 kilograms. So that's going to be the numerator, negative 0.1 kilograms. And then the numerator here will be, we could have done 1.4 minus 1.3, but we know, oh, that numerator is just the distance in kilograms from the mean divided by the standard deviation to get how many standard deviations we are away from the mean, right? Z scores are number of standard deviations away from the mean. <clears throat> so we'll <clears throat> assume that, that we've done lots of those, um, and we'll just not take the time to go through all that. Okay, same question at the end for 12 samples, so I won't go over that. Any questions on this? Anybody have a question on this one? Okay, so let's go on the new stuff. Hopefully that helps a little bit. <clears throat> so the next section, there's not much new, okay? So uh, it's more about confidence intervals. Some new language, some new ways of looking at it, but it's, it's pretty similar. So here's uh, a chart. The first over here is showing that 95.44% of all samples have means within two standard deviations of the population mean. Okay, so that, that's, we know that. We know that's review, right? So if you go out two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below, you get 95.44% of the data if it's normally distributed a normally distributed uh, distribution. Okay, so generalizing that then, so if the total area outside of the confidence interval is alpha. So remember this z, or this notation, this z alpha, what was that? That was the z score. A probability of probability or area of alpha what? So if I'd said z z of uh, zero point three, what would that mean? It's the z score for what? What z score is that? Z zero point three. Do you remember? You're not my liveliest class, but it's understandable. It's 7.30 in the morning, right? All right, Z is 0 0.3. What? Anyone remember what that was? 0 0.3 referred to what? Area to the left. Agree? To the right. Remember, this was kind of, it's kind of the opposite of what the chart, how the chart is based, right? The chart is based on it gives you areas to the left, right? It gives you areas to the left. But this notation said this was the z-score for 0.3 to the right of that z-score. So what would we look up in the chart for that? We'd go into the middle of the table where we're looking for areas and probabilities, and we'd look for uh, 0 0.7000. And then we'd back calculate out to get the z-score for that, right? Because the table is going to give us areas to the left. And so we would look at 0.7 to the left, and then we'd find that, uh, that z-score, and that would be z of 0 0.3. Remember that? OK, so uh, alpha, then, in this setting, is referring to all the area outside of our confidence interval, not just, not just to the uh, not just to the right, but this, the total of this area is alpha. And so then 1 minus alpha is the, the, the confidence that we have, right? So this 1 minus alpha might be, in this case, it's 95.44%. All right? 
and we're going to see that the ones that are most used are 90%, 95%, and 99% are the ones that we're going to see most examples of. Okay, so the total area outside of the confidence interval is alpha. Thus, if we need this, if we want this z-score right here, what are we going to do? We're going to do z of, well, half of that is going to be here, that area, and half of it's going to be here. So we're going to do z of alpha over 2. That's that z-score right there. <clears throat> okay, so for instance, 90% confidence interval. How much area lies outside of our confidence interval if it's a 90% confidence interval? What's the probability of being outside of a 90% confidence interval? He wants 0.1. Agree with that? Yeah, 0.1. So we're going to look to get this z score. What are we going to look at? Z of 0 0.05, right? Because we want 5% to be there of that 0.1 and the other 5% there. So for 90%, for 90% confidence interval, the z-score would be z of 0 0.05. Does it make sense? Because that's saying we want 5% of the data to the right of this z-score. And then we're going to take another 5% over here and chop it off on the left. And that will give us a 90% confidence interval. So, got your chart. Find Z of 0 0.05. So, what you're going to, you're going to go into the table and you're going to look in the middle of the table for area 0 0.0500, the closest you can get, right? Anyone have it yet? Okay. So it shouldn't be negative. <clears throat> okay, I see. So it, yeah, if we no, this is to the Oh, the table is giving to the left, right. Okay, so since the table gives to the left and this is to the right, then we're look, what are we looking for in the table? We're looking for negative, right? We're looking for negative, which is going to be the opposite of what she said. Okay, so yeah, so uh, this indicates 0 0.05 probability to the right. We know the table is giving us to the left, so, uh, sorry. So what are we going to look for in the table? We're not going to look at 0 0.05. What are we going to look at? 0.95, right? 0 0.9500. 0 0. My fault. Sorry. And that should be, what did you say? Kayla? Did, Kayla? did you say? Oh, sorry, Kelly. 1.645. Does it fall right in between two? So it falls right in between two, 1.64 and 1.65. So we'll use 1.645. So what does it mean? If we want a 90% confidence interval, we're going to go 1.645 above. And negative 1.645 or 1.645 below. And that will give us 90% of the data or a probability of picking one B 
being point and being in there uh, point nine. All right, did you, did you follow all that? Does it make sense? So I want you now to, to find the Z scores for a 95% confidence interval and a 99% confidence interval. Okay, so can you find the, the Z scores that, that give us a 95% and a 99% confidence interval? <clears throat> Okay, so let's see, how about 95% confidence interval? That's gonna be Z of zero point what? She wants zero two five. Some nods over here. Right, so 95% confidence interval means 5% will be total outside of the interval, and so each side will be half of that, which would be 2.5%. So then we look in the chart for 0. Point what? 975. 975, good. So if 2.5% is to the right, <clears throat> we know the tables, we want the, the Z score in the table that gives us 97.5 to the to the <laughs> left. And 0. 0.975 gives us a Z score of? Did you get 1.96? That's correct, 1.96. So, 1.96 standard deviations to the right and negative 1.96 standard deviations to the left comprise 95% of the data or <clears throat> would be our 95% confidence interval. <clears throat> Ninety-nine. 99% confidence interval means Z of what? She wants 0 0.005. Question? It depends what's being asked for. If, if you, yeah, we're finding the Z scores. We're finding the Z scores for one above and one below. So, I mean, <clears throat> you could phrase a question to ask for, you could ask for half a dozen different things here. So just read carefully. Yeah. <clears throat> but we're actually, we're getting these, we're getting these three because they're the most commonly used and then we won't do it again. So from here on out, so we're going to just keep, you know, make note of what those three sets of z-scores are and now, in pro and then when we get to these application problems, it's for the most part, it's going to be one of these three and we'll just use this to solve the problems, okay? <clears throat> so, 0 0.05 means to the left is what? 0.995. Agree? And that gives us a z-score of? Is 
it right between? Is it right in between? 2.575. So it's exactly halfway between 2.57 and 2.58. <clears throat> Okay, any questions on that? So take, make note of those values. We're, that's what you're going to use in the problems. For 90% confidence interval, it's going to be plus or minus 1.645 standard deviations. For 95% confidence interval, it's going to be what do you say, 1 .9, plus or minus 1.96. And for 99% confidence interval, it's going to be plus or minus 1.645. Got it? Any questions? Okay. <clears throat> so this is just a, a summary of what we did. You don't have to write all this down. <coughs> it should make sense. <clears throat> We're going to be finding a confidence interval for population mean. All right, and they're going to they're going to give us the confidence interval that we want, and um, we're going to. Find that if we if it's not 90, 95, or 99, you'll use that same procedure to find those z-scores. But most of the time, it will be 90, 95, or 99 percent confidence, and we've already got the z-scores. And then we'll find that interval and interpret it. Okay. There's, so there's everything that we're going to do. You, you don't have to memorize these steps. It just should make sense. It shouldn't be anything that you need to memorize. Okay. So let's do an example here. So ages and years of 50 randomly selected people uh, in the civilian labor force. Assume a population standard deviation of 12.1 years. The sum of the data is 1819. So I want you to find the 90% and 95% confident intervals for the population mean age. Mu. Okay, see if you can do that. <clears throat> so you're going to find the 90% confidence interval and the 95% confidence interval for population mean you today. So this is 50, right? So the sample size is 50. Population standard deviation is 12.1. <clears throat> and then here's a, something that will help you here. Save you a lot of work. The sum of the data is 1819.
Okay, did you get the sample mean? What'd you get for the sample mean? What'd you get? 36.38. Did anyone get that? Sample mean was 36.38. Okay, so that's going to be, what do we call that? If we're using that to say this is our best guess of the population mean, what do we call that? 36.38. Remember from last time? Remember what the term was? Point estimate. Ashley got it, right? Point estimate, okay? If, if we want to say we have one sample, we find the mean, that's our best guess at what the population mean is. That's called a point estimate. But now we want to say, okay, let's get some, let's get some more information about maybe what the mean is, the actual population mean. So we know that at 90% confidence interval, we figured out that that means we're going to be 1.645 standard deviations above the mean and 1.645 standard deviations below the mean. But for samples of size 50, what we're using the sampling distribution standard deviation, which is going to be 12.1, what, divided by square root of 50. So did you guys get the sampling distribution standard deviation? I heard 1.71. Agree with that? So we need to go. We need to go above the. We need to go above here. 1.645 standard deviations. 1.645 of those above the mean, and 1.645 of those below the mean will give us our 90% confidence interval. So what we do? We'll do 1.645 of 1.645 standard deviations above the mean. So the, the calculation just comes right out of what we're doing, right? So see, we want 1.645 standard deviations above the mean. Or 1.645 times 1.71 plus 36.38. Okay, and then we want what? Below the mean, so we're going to do 36.38 minus that many standard deviations, 1.645 times 1.71. <coughs> and what did you get for the upper, or let's do the lower limit first. Anyone get it? 36.38 minus, question. But this, so, um, uh, but no, we need, we need the, because this is based on samples of size 50. The, the confidence interval has to be based on samples of size 50. What's that? Right. So we're saying, so yeah, so we take one sample and we're saying, of all samples of size 50, so we, we've got one. So we're 95% that that one is in 95% confidence interval. So here, here's what we're doing right here. Because um, uh, so we're, we're, using, we're using this one sample to predict what the population is. So we're taking... Uh, we're assuming that we have the we're assuming that we have the uh, the sampling distribution for all all samples of size fifty, and then this is this is one of them. So how confident are we that this is at the this is the mean? Well, it's does that make sense? Yeah. So what could it be? Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Okay, so what, what, is, what are the numbers? Let's, let's write down the numbers. The, the upper bound is 39 point what? Point what? One. Sorry, every time you say something, uh, uh, chair squeaks. Okay, and then uh, the lower limit? 33.57. What we're doing is we are trying to figure out what the population mean is, which is just one number. The population mean is just one number, okay? So we are trying to figure out, get a confidence, we're trying to get an interval with a certain amount of confidence that the population mean is inside this interval. So yeah, so a lot of that data might lie outside of that. But what are we trying to do? We're trying to predict the population mean. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so because the sample size is so big, our 90% confidence interval can be small. Okay, the larger the, the, larger the uh, sample size, the, the more narrow our, our confidence interval can be. It's, it's like more, we're more sure about uh, that the population mean is close to 36.38. Okay. So here is our, what, 90% confidence interval that the population mean, we're 90% sure that the population mean is between 33.57 and 39.19 based on a uh, sample of 50. Okay, anybody have a question? Yes, please. We did that before. We said that a 90% confidence interval will be that's what we did in the previous screen. We said, I said, save those numbers. A 90% confidence interval is, will be 1.645 standard deviations above and 1.645 standard deviations below. There's these scores, right? Number of standard deviations that give us 90%. So then we did the 95% Z scores and we did the 99% Z scores. Okay, other questions? Do you see that? Is that? Yeah. Okay, so do 95%. So find the 95% confidence interval. All right, before you do it, is it going to be narrower or is it going to be wider range, the confidence interval for 95%? It's going to be narrower or wider? Nino says wider. What do you think? Narrower or wider for 95%? So what are we saying? We want, we want to be more sure. 5% more sure that the population is in that range. Is that a narrower range or a wider range? We want to be 5% more sure that we have a range that where the population mean falls. Wider. He was right. Wider. If you want to be more sure, that's the idea of precision. If you want to be more sure that your, your mean is in your confidence interval, then you need a wider confidence interval. Should make sense. You need you need more room for more room for error, and then you're more sure that you're in that interval. So when you do this 95 percent confidence interval, you're gonna get you should get a wider interval than this 33.57 to 39.19. Okay, go.
Okay, so what to, what changes here? We're still we still have our point estimate of thirty six point three eight, but now for a ninety five percent, how many standard deviations above are we going? That was our one point nine six z score, right? One point nine six standard deviations above. So it's still one point, and our standard deviation is still based on the sample size fifty. So we need the one point seven one. And then we're going to go 1.96 below. And we got some new values here. So this will be up, up we said it's going to be a wider range. What's the top, upper limit? 39.73, a little bit bigger. And? What's the lower limit? 33.34. So just a little bit. So by just inching that out a little bit, right? It was less than one, what are these? Years. Less than one year added top and bottom. We just now made that interval that we're 95% sure that the population mean lies in that interval. Or in other words, 95% <coughs> Um, 95% of samples will predict, of size 50, will predict the population mean to be uh, 36.38. All right? No. Okay, well, so I was tr trying to explain it a different way, but I had to rethink that. But we know that there's a 95% chance that the population mean falls in this range based on our 95% confidence interval z-scores of 1.96. Okay, so which interval gives a more precise estimate of mu? The 90% or the 95% confidence interval? Which one of those two gives a more precise estimate? What's that? The 90. Those, those more precise means closer in. And so we have to, to get closer in, to get more precision, we have to let go of confidence, right? So confidence goes down if you demand more precision. <clears throat> if you want more confidence, then you have less precision. You have a wider range, right? <clears throat> Does it make sense? Any questions? Is this what we got? This is what we got, right? We got something different than this. Do we get something different than this? We, is this what we got? Okay, phew, good. Just don't, don't remember. Okay. So again, just a summary. We can be 90% confident that uh, population mean lies in that first range. If we want more confidence, our range has less precision. It's wider. Okay, so you try. Let's start. Well, we'll do, uh, let's try. Um, let's try uh, this one. So uh, we're going to turn this in. I, I forgot to bring your blue sheets, but pretend this is. Uh, so if you just get out a, a sheet of paper, just tear off any. Uh, Fringe on the left, if you're pulling out of a spiral, you make a clean left edge. And let's do, let's do 35 and 36. 35 and 36 to turn in. Bigger? I'm trying to make it bigger. Is that that's bigger, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can work together. You can work together. Any questions on either of these? Yeah. 
2.6, what was it? You didn't write it down? 2. Point, what? 2.575. Okay. Okay, the next little thing is pretty easy. It's called it's margin of error, okay? So margin of error. So when you have confidence interval, then you talk about as a variation of that margin of error. So the margin of error is simply half the distance of the confidence interval. So it's the distance from your point estimate to the upper limit and the distance from the point estimate to the lower limit. So not a big, huge, a new concept. It's just a new term for half the distance of the confidence interval. You hear these say, they say this study has a margin of error of whatever. Well, what they're saying is they're, they're saying this is our, our confidence would be plus or minus this margin of error from our point estimate. <clears throat> you know, 48% of voters will vote for this, or 48% of registered voters are going to vote for this candidate, and our poll has a margin of error of 1.5%. Well, they're talking about a confidence interval of 1.5 above that and below that, making a confidence interval of 3%. If they say their margin of error is 1.5%, they're saying they have a confidence interval that's 3.3% wide around that point estimate. So it is simply this, the margin of error is simply this number of standard deviations, or it's... Uh, it's this number that we're adding to and subtracting from the point estimate. So you just did that in the last two examples. You had your point estimate, you added a number, and you subtracted a number. That's the margin of error. So the units of that is the units of the data. It's not standard deviations because this is the number of standard deviations, and then this is the standard deviation in the units of the data. So this will be in the, have the units of the data. So like I said, if, if the standard, if, if you're saying 48% of voters are going to vote for this, likely vote for this candidate, then your margin of error will be in percentage of voters. <clears throat> or if we're doing mean brain weights, right, brain weights, then this, the margin of error will have the units of brain weight. We're going to go up an amount of brain weight and down amount of brain weight to make our confidence interval, and that's the margin of error. The amount that you go up and down. Okay, so a confidence interval for population has a length of 162.6. So they're telling us the total length, or, or I said width, total length of the confidence, inter confidence interval is 162.6. So that right there is 162.6. Point six, whatever units that is, number of people, you know, some type of weight or volume, whatever that is. So, what would the margin of error be? How would we find the margin of error if the length of the confidence interval is one sixty-two point six? Half that, right? Half that. So, we're going to take one sixty-two point six. Divide by two, and we get eighty-one point three of what this is. It has the same unit as the data. So if it's milligrams, if we're, we're estimating the milligrams of you know something, then that's eighty-one point three milligrams above and below. Okay. If the sample mean is six forty-three point one, determine the confidence interval. So now they just told us that. Boom. The sample mean, which is our point estimate, is 643.1. <clears throat> so determining the confidence interval means declaring the lower limit and declaring the upper limit. So how will we get the lower limit? So, 
Yeah, so the, mar so the margin of error is simply how far you are from the mean to the upper limit and how far you are to the lower limit. So we're going to add 643.1 to 81.3, and we get 700 what? 700. Thank you. We do plus E. And we're going to do minus E. 643.1 minus 81.3. Nice and loud. Thank you. So according to some study, they found they, um, they, they had a sample, a sample whose mean was 643.1, <clears throat> and they found a confidence interval, that, interval for that. And so they could say the mean of this population is 643.1 with a, with a, with a uh, margin of error of 81.3. That means they, to some degree of confidence, they have some degree of confidence that the population mean is between 561.8 and 724.4. Okay, so the confidence interval then, this is the confidence interval. From this to this. That's the answer. That's when they ask for a confidence interval, you're asking for the lower and the upper limits or um, the limits of, of the error. And this is basically the graph is what I drew as we solved it. Okay, does, so does margin of error make sense? Anybody have a question on that? It's just kind of new language. It's a new way of kind of a new angle on this confidence interval. Rather than saying confidence interval, now we can talk about margin of error. All right, so let's do 62 and we'll be done. Yes, you're turning this in. So we're putting so this one puts everything together now. So A sixty two kind of puts together everything we talked about in class in one problem. Yes. 